Hi, Weston Timmers, Automation Specialist with Warner Electric Supply. Welcome to Warner Electric Supply's Automation Learning Series. This series brings you the latest in automation technologies, products, and how-to videos. This video will demonstrate how to configure a data log and historical trending on the PanelView 5000 platform. This is a feature that was added in version 4 of Studio 5000 View Designer. So I've got a blank application here, and the first thing I'm going to do is up in the Project Explorer, go down to Data Logs, right-click that and go to New Data Log. And I can give this any name I like. I'll just leave it at the default. And then we'll double-click to open. And this is where we'd configure the data log itself. Uh, sample rate is how often it's going to update the tag values in the data log. Uh, and now this is in milliseconds, so it defaults to one second. Uh, I'm going to update that to 500 milliseconds. And then we get a log duration. So this is how long we would like to store the data for before it begins overwriting. Um, as you can see, we can adjust this in minutes, hours, and days. And uh, we can go up to 365 days with this. So I'll just leave it uh, for this demonstration at seven days. And then we can configure some tags within the data log. Uh, so for this example, I'm only going to configure one. And to do that, uh, I can browse out and I'm going to grab this accumulated value of this counter. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So we've added that in the data log. Down in the lower right, it'll show us um, our capacity, um, how many total tags across all of my data logs that I have, and I only have one right now. And then the, the uh, tag count within this current data log. So that's kind of handy. Next thing I'll do is uh, add a trend in. So uh, we can tie in the log data into a, a live trend, which will pull historical data from that data log. Okay, so to do that, I'll come down here under trend charts and add one of these into my application. Okay, and then I'll need to configure a trace for the data log. So the value, I can browse out and I'm going to grab that same tag that I selected from my data log. Give it a name, uh, some other configuration information. We can configure how wide we want the uh, um, line to be on the trend. If we want to have it show markers where it's showing data or not, I'll just leave all the defaults here. Okay, so from this point, um, I have a data log and a trend set up. Uh, there's no need to correlate the data log to the trend as long as um, the trend's uh, uh, traced tag exists in the data log, it'll automatically pull historical data as long as the data log is running, which the data log will run on its own as soon as we boot up the terminal. So. Now I'm going to download this program to my PanelView terminal. I'll let that run through. I'll note here that uh, we do need to have an SD card inserted into the PanelView terminal because that's where the data log stores its historical data. So if we don't have an SD card, we won't get any historical data or no data log will run. Uh, so there's some um, troubleshooting information that we can view from the terminal side once we get into there. So now I've got a VNC connection into the terminal. And so this is just my main display, just to uh, show you that I'm on a different display other than the trend. Next, I'll pull up the trend display. And you can see here that uh, we already had some historical data from that data log running from when the terminal booted up. So if I navigate back to my main display, and then I go back into the trend, we see that that historical data is still there. Um, if I had not configured the data log or if it was not running, every time we navigated back to this trend display, we would see the trend start up again and start logging data uh, in real time rather than historically. So I mentioned the uh, troubleshooting display. So that is under the settings menu, under the data logs section here. And I can see that it's running, right? So um, 
What this is showing me here is an option to export that data log file out to a CSV uh, so that I could um, view that on a computer, maybe look at the data, manipulate it somehow if I wanted to. Uh, so I have two options here. I can either export the data log to the SD card itself where it's currently logging the data, uh, or I can export it to a USB drive that I'd have plugged into the terminal itself. So um, I went ahead and I did this earlier and exported this. So now I can go out and show you what that looks like. So here it is, here's the CSV file in Excel, and uh, I've only been logging this one tag here, so it's pretty straightforward, but if I had multiple tags, they would just show up along here in separate columns with their corresponding values. Uh, it's showing a timestamp here, right? So I'm logging uh, every 500 milliseconds, so every half second, uh, I'm getting an update here. And then it's showing me the, the value at that time, uh, that point in time. So I can scroll through and show that, yep, my value's going up and down and up and down as I have it configured in the PLC program. So that's what that would look like. And then the final thing I wanted to show was this uh, tech note from the Rockwell Knowledge Base. Uh, so tech note 1070628. And this is just showing um, some of the frequently asked questions that go along with the data logging feature. So how many data logs does a project support? So we can put up to three data logs in uh, each project. And each log can be configured with a different sample rate, log duration, and different list of tags to be logged, right? So we could log some tags at half a second, some tags at maybe two seconds, and then if there's some tag that's not as important, uh, maybe we log that, you know, every five seconds, something like that. So we can do that just to be uh, more efficient on memory utilization on the SD card. How many tags are supported for logging? Uh, we can configure, can configure up to 250 tags across all the data logs in the project. So between those three data logs that you get, you can have 250 tags in between those three. Um, how often can it be logged? Uh, 500 milliseconds up to one minute is the maximum. Um, for how long can it be logged? So we, as I mentioned earlier, we can log data for up to 365 days before it starts to overwrite. Obviously, uh, if we're logging a lot of tags at a short uh, sample rate, uh, like their example here, um, it's not going to make it up to that 365 days depending on the size of the SD card, right? So. Um, Obviously, you need to have a large enough SD card. The next section here goes into that. So uh, the formats that we can use, the two different styles of formats for the SD card. Uh, it says that it's recommended to use at least a four gig card, uh, maximum size being 32 gig. Um, how does the data log start? Uh, as soon as there's an SD card in the terminal and we have a data log configured in the application, uh, it will start logging that data to the SD card. So we don't have to tell it to start. We don't have to configure any of that. It'll just automatically take off and start logging. Uh, I already went through and showed how you would go about exporting that. I showed you what it looked like. Uh, and this is just a screenshot showing if we don't have an SD card loaded, uh, what that data log screen would look like. So it's kind of grayed out here, hashed out, and it says that it uh, check the SD card and reboot the terminal. For more information, contact your local Warner Electric Supply representative. Be sure to check out Warner Electric Supply's YouTube channel for more videos from our automation learning series.